Deadline. Uh, Alex Rivera set to write and direct Zorro 2.0 for Soboni Films. Who owns Sobini? Sobini, sorry, Soboni. <laughs> yeah, but Soboni sounds good too. Oops, um, exclusive. Alex Rivera, a recipient of the 2021 MacArthur Genius Grant, is set to write and direct Zorro 2.0 for Sob Sobini Films. The film reimagines the iconic character as Oscar de la Vega, a young, undocumented hacker known as Zorro. Oh. While, hold on, hold on, while fighting back against a secret government until that attack, until that attacked, until that attacked his mother, uh, he discovers a high tech conspiracy that threatens not only his family, but his world. Andre, what, what is, I know you're a huge Zorro fan. Uh, what is the origin of Zorro in 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 old California, and and who did who did he fight, and who did he protect? Yeah, well, uh, the original Zorro, as written in uh, in nineteen twenty, uh, that was when he first appeared on print in the Curse of Capistrano. And uh, he was a nobleman, he was a Don, or rather he was the son of a Don, who was going to be a Don himself. However, he fought the forces of tyranny, meaning he fought the evil Californian government at the time, who were oppress oppressing the people and the natives, basically the villagers and the peons of California. Those were the ones that he fought, uh, uh, fought for, at night time, as the masked bandit, as he came to be known, Zorro. Of course, he was more like Robin Hood. He wasn't a bandit in that he stole from anyone other than perhaps the very, very rich. Mm -hmm. And the character is one that has like roots in in uh, literature. He was inspired in part by the Scarlet Pimpernel, but also by some. Uh, some real-life Mexican Robin Hoods, uh, if you will, such as the um, uh, Joaquin Murrieta uh, and a couple of others. So it's a, it's a very rich character in this sense. Mm -hmm. And the original story has been filmed many, many times over, and that's the only reason why I don't throw the computer out the window in frustration over over this byline and what they're doing here. Right. Is that we have actually gotten uh, the curse of Capistrano. That story has been done ju justice already the year after it was published. Uh, and we've mm. we've reviewed that movie, the, the original Mark of Zorro mm -hmm. from 1920. And that's a fantastic video. Everyone should go check it out. It's right here on Midnight's Edge Espanol. That was a really fun watch party. That movie has been remade several times over, both in 1940 and again in 1974. The story has been continued beyond that point in the 1950s Disney series. It's been continued beyond that point in the 1990s Family Channel series. You've done the next generation of Zorro with the Antonio Banderas movies. And in addition to that, you have a whole slew of other Zorro movies around the world. You have European movies, you have Italian movies, you have French movies, you even have a good series of vibrant Mexican Zorro movies. So it is a character that has been done justice and done really, really well on screen many times over. Mm -hmm. And that is the only reason why I'm remotely tolerant of this very different take of Zorro 2.0. And this actually isn't anything new, because mm. they've been trying to get a new Zorro movie off the ground for the past decade. Mm -hmm. And almost without exception, unless we are dealing with some kind of female-centric female Zorro spin-off, it has been some kind of alternate future Zorro. Uh, they were trying to develop a post-apocalyptic Zorro story. <laughs> Which, uh, which is uh, which, which is mm -hmm. kind of like um, fitting for the times we are in right now. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, and now they appear to have about that in terms of hacker sorrow. And it appears to be like some kind of, um, still there appears to be some kind of uh, uh, messaging because now it's about border wars and uh, conflict in which immigrant families are pitted against regimes of high tech surveillance. Mm -hmm. And uh, Soto himself is an illegal and a hacker. So, yeah. Uh, a lot to go into here. I do hope mm -hmm. that uh, that the script, and they must have a script, I hope that that is more structured than the synopsis is. Well, um, Rivetta says, I've always been interested in films that address real-world issues through genre. This project is an opportunity to connect Zoro, the original masked Avenger, to today's border wars, a conflict in which immigrant families are pitted against regimes of high-tech surveillance and government control. Zoro 2.0 will be visually elevated, socially grounded, sci-fi cinema, and I'm thrilled to be working with Sobini to get this vision on the screen. Tom, uh, you got some info about Sobini, and I'd like to get your take on this so far. Yeah, the Sobini company I'm looking into, um, there is some shadiness among the owner, Mark Amin. He was, uh, I don't think he actually got in trouble for it, but he was... Uh, accused of some illegal trading at oh, one right. point <laughs> he wouldn't be the first All right. no no <laughs> no but no right. like as far as his film career goes like mm -hmm. he, he's uh he's a graduate of the trimark company for those who don't know trimark is most well known for like uh the leprechaun series um nice. and stuff like that uh they, they picked up the iron eagle uh franchise and a few other things um, but then he went on to make this uh, new company, which is most well known for The Prince and Me and The Prince and Me Too. But this guy also uh, had produced films like Frida and a few other uh, independent movies. So the guy who owns the company clearly has a, a, a you know a film history. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the first I'm really hearing of the company outside of their Prince and Me franchise, which is basically their big, big uh, claim to fame to this point. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm kind of leery on how they're going to handle this i mean mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. depends uh i don't know this could be one of those companies that they're like you know they, they make these movies and they're a front for laundering money but at the same time he could genuinely be a fan of this and somebody has a good take on this and uh you know he sees a a market for it which you know as we constantly point out on midnight's edge and here you know the the, the latino market is underrepresented in film and television and you know, this is not a bad thing. We've seen a lot of Zorro projects get off the ground in the last year or mm -hmm. two, or at least be announced anyway, right, Andre? Well, let me, uh, real quick, let me let me get through this, and then I want to hear from uh, Pablo and Diego. Um, let me go to here. You talked about Sobini films already, so let's just go right to uh, Zorro is a fictional character created by Johnston McCulley in 1919, widely recognized by his all-black costume featuring a sombrero, cape, and mask. He's been portrayed multiple times. Uh, from uh, actors such as Douglas Fairbanks to Antonio Banderas, the, the last to play him, Mask of Zorro, Legend of Zorro. Um, Deadline revealed a Zorro drama series with a female lead that was being developed at NBC from Robert Rodriguez and Sofia Vergara last December. Isn't there a Zorro series running right now on Telemundo or something like that? Or is that ended or... I could have swore. Yeah, that's right. that's ended long time ago. Oh, that did it? Was okay. Several years ago. You're talking about Soto la, la Espada y la Rosa. Okay. Uh, or, yeah, th that's been a while. Let me just uh, finish this. Rivera made his feature debut in, with the 2008 cyberpunk thriller Sleep Dealer. Set at the U.S.-Mexico border, he followed it with the doc-scripted hybrid The Infiltrators. This tells a true story about an immigration detention center. A scripted series based on the film is being adapted for the small screen by Blumhouse Television. Diego, pensamientos. Bueno, en español primero para los que están yeah, escuchando. Can... Yeah, that's cool. Solo para dar un segundo. Eh, hay un nuevo proyecto de zorro, de zorro. Va a ser un hacker. Lo está haciendo Alex Rivera. Me parece interesante. Ahora en in inglés. Uh, I... I will be honest, okay? When I heard the whole point of view that he's going to be, you know, an illegal immigrant and the whole, you know, border conflict and uh, the state, 
mm-hmm. and then I saw some of his works of Alex Rivera and I thought, okay, he's trying to at least give the spin that's characteristic of him. Okay. Of his In work, that right. sense, I, I see a bit more okay, they might actually be letting him have fun with it. So that means it could be interesting as well. Because if you if you consider the aspect of Zoro as a character, mm-hmm. okay, and part of what he does you know, working in the shadows and whatnot. The idea of making him a hacker doesn't seem as far-fetched once you think about what Zoro does in the stories, how he saves people, how he, you know, goes sometimes into people's houses to steal information or steal evidence to help save somebody's life, mm-hmm. right? So on that sense, I I feel, yes, they're trying to have fun with the character and putting elements that might work in a modern era, Okay. What I'm worried about is if they go a bit too far in that approach. Mm. Where they disconnect the idea of Zoro and unfortunately make it feel more like Watch Dogs, you know, the video games from Ubisoft that were also about hackers and sort of fighting against the police state. So that's where it, it could be good, but if it goes too far, right? You could lose completely the whole idea of Zoro, except the name. Mm. That's the only peril I see from this. I agree uh, with that. I think that's a very, very good take because the story of Zoro, as someone who fights tyranny, that specifically in California, that is one that can very easily be adapted to different ages. His approach can easily be adapted to to different eras. If you want to do it today, this kind of is the way to do it. There's some precedent, for instance, in The Phantom, which is a contemporary character to Zorro. And in the 90s, they also did a cyberpunk version of that, Phantom yeah. 2044, which, by the way, was an absolutely fantastic series and reimagination. Amazing series. If, mm-hmm. if this is anything kind of like that... I mean, I would have loved for him to say, "Oh, we're, I'm, I was a childhood fan of um, of Phantom 2040, and uh, if we, I was thinking we can do something like that to Zoro." He says that, I'm all in. But yeah, I agree with the, with your point of complaint here that when you do something this radical, it's very easy that becomes Zoro in name only. That you mm. kind of like lose touch with everything that makes Zoro Zoro. That you just change it too much. Right. Um, uh, Geek Tropology. Pablo. Oh, ok, uh, primero voy a ir en español un poco. Esto entra dentro de mi campo en algunas formas. Uh, yo he participado en algunos grupos de hackers. ¿Qué van a hacer? Simplemente una persona que se sienta con Kali, Linux y Pento a tratar de hacer prop de puertos o algo así. No tiene mucho sentido. Pudieron haber hecho algo interesante con esta idea, pero no con Zorro sino eh, tal vez algo como Robin Hood. Eh, tienes a una persona que está todo el tiempo como hacker robando Bitcoin de eh, empresas gigantescas y de repente al final de la temporada descubres es el hijo del de análogo de Jeff Bezos en esa realidad. Algo así pudieron haber hecho. En vez de eso se van con zorro. No me convence esto de hacker. He... La cantidad de películas y cosas que he visto sobre hacking eh, de Estados Unidos, la más cercana que he visto a la realidad es en la segunda película de Tron, cuando el, el sujeto que maneja toda la empresa está matando aplicaciones y demás para detener el hackeo a su red. Eso es Linux, eso es hackeo. El resto de cosas no me parece que vayan a ir en ese sentido y al menos yo voy a estar frustrado todo el tiempo por una bastardización de zorro y por una bastardización de tecnología. Uh, I will go on English now. About this, I was saying that uh, I, I have part- participated in hacking for a long time, for uh, 15 years or so. So I just, uh, when I hear this, it's like there will be a guy with a Raspberry Pi and Kali Linux probing the ports of a company is lame. In my look of that is lame. But they could have done something, not with Zorro, but with uh, Robin Hood, where you have this character that is a hacker that is stealing Bitcoins in this world. And then in the end of the season, when he's captured and everything looks wrong, we discovered that he's the son of someone like Jeff Bezos on that world. 
Uh, so we have even a cliffhanger for the next uh, season, and you can do something with that. You can have mm -hmm. this character actually robbing people and getting that money through laundering to society, actually giving it to communities. So they are missing the mark here in this, but that's my opinion anyway. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that because, I mean, I, we haven't haven't seen the the product at all the film at all but um and i i'm think you know because of alex rivera's pedigree i mean like he's dedicated a lot of his career to uh kind of like the internet global globalization sci-fi and then mixing that with immigrant issues he's he's you know that i remember sleep dealer when it came out um and that's 2008. That's before any of this social media. I mean, uh, he was on the edge. You know, he was, he was, you know. So uh, to me, this is the, mo the most promising thing about this, guys, is, is him. I don't know about this film company. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but um, he's, he's put out some good work in the past. Um, this is, to me, this is the opposite, Andre, of the television series that was announced earlier this year which sounds horrid sounds absolutely horrible. oh yeah um this has a chance to be like an independent uh minded uh you know unique film uh, it has right. to yeah it has the chance to be something that is as cool as uh, phantom 2040 and it has the chance to be super mario brothers Yep. Because that was also a cyberpunk <laughs> take on on uh, a property that wasn't cyberpunk. Um, we should all we should all check out Sleep Dealers and do a do a do a panel on that. Yeah. First I film. want to recommend something if you like sorrow and you want something that looks unique and amazing. There's a cartoon from 1997 of sorrow. It's mm -hmm. called Sorrow. It's just crazy amazing. Is old school, is the old story of Sorrow, but the style of the animation and the plot that they went with, just great. So, check it out. Four, three, two, one.